I think we've all heard the advice about weight loss, right? Eat less, move more. But that doesn't work well for some people. What if I said that your gut microbiome actually had something to say about your waistline? What if your gut microbiome, these trillions of bacteria and microbes that live in our gut, what if they weren't just along for the ride, but they were actually steering or hindering your metabolism? Now, over the past decade, science has uncovered this surprising link between the gut microbiome and chronic diseases like cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes, even Alzheimer's, other chronic conditions as well. But more recently, researchers have begun to discover the link between the gut microbiome and visceral fat. Now, visceral fat is like the fat that wraps around your internal organs and it drives a lot of inflammation. For example, here's a CT image demonstrating that you have subcutaneous fat, which is actually not considered unhealthy, but then you have deep subcutaneous fat, which actually is considered very unhealthy, but then also visceral fat, which is considered the worst type of fat. Now again, visceral fat is the fat that wraps around your organs internally, but it drives a lot of inflammation. So generally, you know, if you're more obese, you're gonna have more visceral fat than somebody who's thin, but that's not always the case. Here's a study where they showed two CTs of visceral fat in two different people with the same BMI. But as we've talked about before on this channel, BMI isn't exactly the best way to determine if you're overweight or not, but I digress. Now the interesting thing about visceral fat is that not only is it not appealing for most people for aesthetic reasons of being overweight, but like I said, it's also very highly linked to inflammation and then cardiovascular disease, type two diabetes, Alzheimer's, all sorts of different things. And that's where today's story begins. Because as it turns out, your gut microbiome and specifically the postbiotics that the gut microbiome creates might be one of the keys to unlocking better fat metabolism, especially for visceral fat. So let's talk about one of the most powerful human studies that we have on the topic the DIRECT PLUS trial. Nearly 300 participants with abdominal obesity were randomized into one of three diets. A standard healthy dietary guidelines group, we're gonna call HDG. A Mediterranean diet group, we're gonna call MED for Mediterranean. But then a high polyphenol, plant-rich, green Mediterranean diet, we're gonna call Green Med. And that included green tea, walnuts, and mankai a strain of duckweed rich in polyphenols and protein. Now, all participants in the study received the same calorie limit and physical activity guidance. But here's where it gets interesting. The Healthy Dietary Guidelines group lost 4.2% of their visceral fat, not bad. The Standard Mediterranean group lost even more, 6% of their visceral fat. However, the Green Mediterranean diet group lost 14.1% of their visceral fat, more than double what the other groups lost. Similarly, the green Mediterranean group lost more than double of their deep subcutaneous fat, which as I mentioned earlier, is a very unhealthy type of fat. Now, what's even more impressive, the visceral fat loss happened independently of total weight loss. That means their body composition improved in ways that the scale couldn't really fully capture. So even though the green Mediterranean diet experienced greater visceral fat loss compared to those on the standard Mediterranean or the healthy dietary guidelines group, their overall weight loss was only slightly more. In other words, the green Mediterranean diet group led to healthier fat distribution and metabolic benefits without dramatic changes in body weight. So what made the difference? Well, the researchers measured blood and urine markers and found higher levels of something called urolithin A and hippuric acid. Those are two powerful postbiotics produced by the gut microbiome. So it isn't just about eating more plants. This was about changing your internal biochemistry, shifting the metabolism at a cellular level. So what are these postbiotics? Well, they're not live bacteria like probiotics. Instead, postbiotics are the end products created when the gut microbiome breaks down the food that you eat, especially fiber and polyphenol rich foods. As your gut bacteria digest these compounds, they produce postbiotics, which are part of their normal activity, kind of like the natural waste or output of microbial metabolism. 
Now these byproducts include compounds like urolithin A, short chain fatty acids like butyrate, acetate, and propionate, hippuric acid, and others. And while they aren't alive, these postbiotics can have powerful effects on your body, like supporting the gut health, reducing inflammation, and improving metabolism. So you can think of prebiotics as like non-digestible carbohydrates like fiber and starch that feed the microbes of the gut. And then you can think of probiotics as the actual live microbes. And then think of postbiotics as chemical messages that your gut microbes send to your body. Now these molecules influence how you burn fat, how hungry you feel, how sensitive your cells are to insulin, and how much inflammation is simmering under the surface. Now some postbiotics even communicate with the mitochondria, right? The energy engines of your cells. And that's what brings us to one of the most exciting discoveries in the field, urolithin A. Now urolithin A is produced by the gut bacteria when you eat foods rich in elegitanins, which I know is a mouthful, which include foods like pomegranates, walnuts, wolfia globosa, also known as mankai or duckweed. It's a high protein aquatic plant used in the green Mediterranean diet from that direct plus trial. In fact, the participants who ate more walnuts and more mankai had higher levels of urolithin A in their urine, and those with the highest levels of urolithin A lost the most visceral fat, independent of how much weight they lost. Now here's the kicker. This all happened without any changes to exercise routines. All participants were encouraged to be physically active and even got free gym memberships, but their exercise wasn't strictly prescribed or supervised. Physical activity was tracked through questionnaires, and since there was no major differences between the three groups, the real difference maker was the diet. So how then was this visceral fat loss accomplished in the green Mediterranean group? One likely mechanism is mitophagy. Mitophagy is the targeted cleanup and recycling of old dysfunctional mitochondria. When parts of the mitochondria don't work well, we don't wanna necessarily throw the whole mitochondria out. We just wanna repair the parts that aren't working well inside the mitochondria. That's called mitophagy. Now urolithin A, which again is a postbiotic produced by the food in the green Mediterranean diet, has been shown to stimulate mitophagy, helping cells run more efficiently and potentially burn fat more effectively. And it's not just one study. In a separate randomized control trial published in Cell Reports Medicine, researchers gave urolithin A supplements to 88 middle-aged overweight adults for four months, and the results were impressive. Without any changes to diet or exercise, the urolithin A group showed a 10 to 12% increase in leg muscle strength, while the placebo group actually lost about 10% in strength over the same time. The urolithin supplementation group also saw improved mitochondrial health with increases in mitophagy-related proteins, something that's not seen in the placebo group. And then lastly, they saw a 15% boost in aerobic endurance, measured by walking distance and VO2 max, while the placebo group showed little to no improvement. So urolithin A is a postbiotic that isn't just cleaning up your cells. It's helping your body move, perform, and burn energy more efficiently. Similarly, losing visceral fat isn't just about energy in versus energy out. It's about how your cells manage and optimize that energy. But this video isn't just about one study. It's about postbiotics in general. So let's look at another group of postbiotics that deserve spotlight. Short chain fatty acids. Now, short-chain fatty acids include acetate, butyrate, and propionate, and they're made when your gut microbes ferment prebiotic fibers like inulin, resistant starch, and fructo-oligosaccharides. Short-chain fatty acids do some pretty powerful things. They trigger the release of incretin hormones like GLP-1 and GIP, the very same hormones that drugs like Ozempic and Manjaro are designed to mimic. They help improve insulin sensitivity. They enhance satiety, making you feel fuller and eat less. They help regulate fat storage and energy use. In other words, pharma is basically copying what a healthy gut is already built to do. So here's the catch. Many people who struggle with losing weight or struggle with type two diabetes have impaired incretin hormone secretion. Why? Well, two big reasons. First of all, an altered gut microbiome that isn't producing enough postbiotics to stimulate 
the K cells and the L cells in the gut, the cells that make GLP-1 and GIP, and secondly, chronic inflammation in the gut that damages or suppresses those same hormone-producing cells. And that's why simply popping a probiotic or postbiotic supplement often isn't enough. If your gut's inflamed, those helpful bacteria and the metabolites they produce may never get to do their job. You also need to nourish your gut lining with whole food, plants, polyphenols, prebiotic fibers to calm inflammation and rebuild the ecosystem that helps regulate hunger, insulin, and fat storage. Now, the Direct Plus trial is powerful, but it's not the only study supporting this approach. A Japanese randomized control trial found that Lactobacillus gasseri reduced visceral fat and waist circumference by over 8% in just 12 weeks. Another trial using Lactobacillus sacchi showed a significant drop in visceral fat in overweight adults, even when the calorie intake and exercise were held constant. A systematic review of 27 human randomized controlled trials found that 23 of them reported meaningful weight loss or fat loss by using probiotics or symbiotics, often involving strains like Lactobacillus and Bifidobacterium. And a 2024 study in scientific reports showed that obese women who followed a fiber-rich diet and added probiotic yogurt improved their gut microbiota and lost fat mass even without extreme calorie restriction. Across these studies, a clear pattern emerges. The right gut microbiota produce the right postbiotics. And those postbiotics, like urolithin A and butyrate and propionate, they reshape how your body handles food, fat, and fuel. So where does that leave us? Well, it's clear that not all calories are created equal, especially when it comes to how they affect your gut microbiome and postbiotic production. Secondly, the most powerful weight loss interventions might not come in some new fancy expensive drug that has chock full of side effects, but through your plate, right? With fiber rich polyphenol packed minimally processed foods to help your gut microbiome. But remember, you don't have to like overhaul everything overnight. Sometimes it starts with simple shifts that support the right gut bacteria. Certain prebiotic foods that contain inulin, a type of fiber that helps feed beneficial microbes and supports postbiotic production. But how that works and what it means for your metabolism is something that I'll dive into in a future video. So while a diverse plant-rich diet is always the foundation, some people may also benefit from targeted supplements like urolithin A or short-chain fatty acids to help support mitochondrial function and gut health, especially when diet alone isn't enough or gut function is compromised. So as I mentioned earlier, we know that people who struggle with their weight or type 2 diabetes tend not to have a gut microbiome that's great at making short-chain fatty acids or urolithin A or hippuric acid or other postbiotics that help with mitophagy and blood sugar management and visceral fat loss. So these people sometimes need a helping hand with some postbiotic supplementation. Now, if you're curious about where to start, I've put together a postbiotic support plan on Fullscript that includes two well-researched options, Apex Energetics in Teravite, which has short-chain fatty acids, and Codage's liposomal urolithin A. You'll find the link in the description or just scan this QR code on the screen if you're watching this on a larger device. Now, of course, not every gut responds the same, right? People dealing with things like SIBO or IBS might need a more tailored strategy. Everyone's gut microbiome is different. And sometimes it takes a much more personalized approach to get things working again. Now, if that's something that you're exploring, I do help people one-on-one -on -one, and I'm always happy to support where I can. So stay tuned because in a future video, we'll be peeling back the layers of how your gut drives metabolism. And finally, give it time, right? The gut microbiome is dynamic, but it's not instantaneous. It takes weeks, sometimes months, for major shifts to take place. But the results go deeper than just your bathroom scale, right? You're not just changing your weight, you're changing your biology. So the message here is simple, but powerful. Feed your gut and let it feed you back. So thanks for watching and stay kind to your gut.